Hello everyone and welcome to my session Lenovo Intelligent Insights with SAP Data Hub running on SUSE CAST platform. Um, I want to talk about a data management application uh, that is the same actually like a application called SAP Data Hub or nowadays name was changed SAP Data Intelligence and um, in the end it's all about why we are working uh, with SUSE on this on this topic and how um, we can leverage the platform actually there are some influencing trends in data and that we uh, that we want to take into, into account and in the end um, we're dealing with a product called Data Hub or Intelligent Insights and I want to tell you what it's all about with it. Um, together with SUSE and SAP we created a reference architecture for the tool SAP Data Hub and I want to show you anything about that and in the end um, let's talk about how this application can be used. It's rather bis uh, uh, business overview than a technical session. So why SUSE? Actually, Lenovo likes and loves working together with SUSE. We usually work together uh, when creating documents, work together for reference architectures, and even um, you can see it on the right side, uh, we did a video together to tell you and uh, the SUSE community about the, the data management landscape and how we together can can uh, create solutions for that. So joint pub publications and even joint solution development. So my colleagues, my development colleagues in Waldorf at SAP closely work together with the SUSE developers um, in Waldorf as well. So you, in this case it uh, was quite um, near to, uh, quite clear to have a, have a session at SUSECon or virtual SUSECon actually. So before we start telling you anything about the solution, we, I want to tell you about influencing trends in data. And uh, I think it's nothing new to anyone, but in the end, it's a, it's a context that we need to that we need to know and um, on that we need to work. So let's start with cloud computing. You might know cloud computing as all this AWS and Azure stuff, and uh, but it's even more. So we have infrastructure as a service, and this is actually what you maybe deal with when talking about cloud providers like AWS, Google Cloud, uh, Azure, and so on. And this is where you just put all your software in uh, on virtual hardware that is somewhere in the cloud. But there's also a platform as a service, and actually this is what we talking talk about here because. Um, all this DevOps stuff running on SUSE Cast, for example, um, can be seen as platform as a service. So you just get a development platform and that you can leverage. Uh, on the top there is software as a service. Means um, software as a service is all this stuff you might know as uh, Salesforce, for example, or Microsoft 365. Anything runs in the cloud. It's not on your PC, it's somewhere else in the internet and you access it. Um, even Netflix is just a cloud solution, means software as a service. So the objectives for cloud are mainly flexibility and um, saving money. So economical reasons, because by you having this flexibility, you can just scale on demand means if you need more system resources on your infrastructure, you just add it and if you don't need it any longer, you give it away. Um, as well, there are central storage facilities and some kind of automation and with this automation, uh, certain ease of use of the whole platform. So you can make life easier going to the cloud. One part of it. The next part is big data. So big data in general is just uh, not big data from size, but data from the mass of data. So you just collect data as you as a company collect data um, as you as you can. So you have you probably have mobile apps that 
collect data from the mobile phones from your customers. You provide websites that track where the people are going and so on and so on. Collecting data, you, you have video cameras, um, you use, you have uh, streams from, from social media, we, uh, audio data, anything data that's residing on your local hard disk, Excel files, and so on and so on. And it's quite different data. So it's a heterogeneous field of data. And you might even uh, might not even know what data you have. So it's unstructured, easy to find, and uh, in the end, it's just a mass of data. So there are the four weeks. Volume means the mass of data, the variety, so the heterogeneity, Velocity, the speed, for example, the data stream comes in um, when talking about social media or video streaming or something like that, and the variety. So the uncertainty of data. You don't know if this data is correct. And in the end, what you want is you want to extract the relevant part of this data for your business. And this is quite hard to achieve. So the third step is artificial intelligence. Anyone's talking about artificial intelligence. So um, we're talking about AI, it's the abbreviation of it, and then we are often listen to word like machine learning. And the specialty of machine learning is deep learning. We all know about that in the meanwhile. And in the end, this will be the future of lots of lots of business, mainly in the production industry, but also in services. So what we actually have again is data, 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 data from different sources, from SAP systems, from the file systems, um, video data, audio data, whatever. And we need to use this data to train the machine learning algorithms. Before, however, we can use this data, it must be clean. So it must be true data, data we can, we can actually use. The output of this is just automation. So if we want to automate our productions, our services, um, streamline, streamline processes and so on, robotic process automation, um, we definitely will need to use AI for that. Okay, um, how does this play together with the product that was, uh, I, I want to tell you? So the product actually is SAP Data Hub means SAP Data Intelligence or the OEM product, Lenovo Intelligent Insights. So Lenovo has a contract with SAP uh, that allows Lenovo to use this product as an OEM product. Means we can add some additional value with our infrastructure competence and uh, can sell it separately and uh, without any uh, connection to SAP. Um, that's just a difference, means um, there's, in the software itself, there's no difference. So um, take Intelligent Insights as a synonym to SAP Data Hub. But what it's all about? We have 20 years of uh, consolidation and uh, homogenization in, in IT that is in the, in, in the past, and despite that, today, it seems like uh, there is more and more um, heterogeneous data landscape that exists. Um, this, of course, depends on the switch to cloud computing. Means now we have our systems not only on premises in our data center, but also in the cloud. And uh, there is a new player in the game, and this is called IoT. Means there are lots of sensors spread all around the world in machines, in the production um, sites, even on your smartphones and so on. And all these sensors and uh, little devices provide data. And most of the time, this is unstructured data. So big data, we talked about that. And uh, we somehow need to bring all this together. And how we achieve this, this is a possibility to use Lenovo Intelligent Insights or SAP Data Hub. You see it's a synonym. So you all have all these different data sources, means whether this is video, this is S, S4HANA, this is all, all different SAP systems, 
um, no matter if, it, if it's on-premise or in the cloud, Salesforce and so on, storage solutions, um, cloud-based, um, you, you want to leverage all this data and you bring, want to bring it together in one point. And the only possibility you have is you have a platform, a central platform that aggregates all this data and makes it accessible for you. And this actually is Lenovo Intelligent Insights. So think about this one. So think about any of these ingredients are data sources. So you might want to eat the tomato or the, the, the pickle separately or the cheese. But in the end, doesn't it taste better if you have a burger menu out of all, the, all these ingredients? And so you can see this as a metaphor for, for your data sources. So you might leverage all your data that is separate uh, separately consumable, but you can make something even better out of it. Means you can have ideas, combine the data, and even create new business, businesses out of it. So that's the idea of SAP Data Hub, and in this case, of course, Lenovo Intelligent Insights. So the main features are that you can discover your data. The point is, I talked about all this big, big data. You have a huge data lake, and you might not even know what it's inside. So the, the, the first idea is to make the data accessible, to find out data you have and uh, to tag it, to provide metadata for it. So the idea is to create some kind of virtual tables that you can access via a access language. Next step is data governance. Means um, you have lots of data and uh, you might wanna control who uses this data and how the data at all is used. So just have a possibility to control your data, uh, your data um, lake and your data, how it's, how it's being used. Next step is to refine data. If you think about the data scientists use 80% of their time just to discover and, and uh, correct the data. So having a tool would be a good opportunity to make life easier. So data must not be correct. Our data must be correct, but might not be correct, actually. So you can use the tool to refine your data, enrich it with different data, and uh, even uh, cleanse the data. And this is one of the main parts of data scientists, actually. In the end, you can even use the data using um, pipeline workflows. Means you have something like a pipeline modeler, workflow modeler, and you create create your your workflows where you can even develop um, um, applications, automation engines based on the data you you have. So there are different different predefined data sources that can be leveraged in SAP Data Hub, and there are different tools that are integrated into, into the, the, the application. So if you think about the metaphor from, uh, from the burger menu, you can see and you can compare um, each ingredient to some source of data and you can see the tooling means the programming language, the, the frameworks and all this other um, data science stuff that can be that can be integrated and can be used to transform to work with the data and to um, process the data. So you can bring all these ingredients together with the tooling and put it into some kind of oven um, that is called SAP Data Hub. And in the end, you finally have your burger menu or something else. What you can do with with all these ingredients. This is the idea, just to. Put all this on uh, in one platform to have one platform that it's that provides end-to-end -end data business and data governance. So it's also so about um, the journey to the through the digital transformation. So your company might not be that agile that it has a central source of data in in the 
uh, in the company. Usually today there are still silos and kingdoms with kings that don't uh, wanna wanna share all their stuff, and um, so you can just use Lenovo Intelligent Insights or Data Hub as a some kind of data virtualization layer. So it just looks like there is one single source of data, but in the end, in the background, in the back end, it just accesses different data sources on premises and in the cloud. And so it makes the data accessible actually. And you can gain a comprehensive insight into your company's data. And um, the end, in the end, the aim is to just generate new businesses by combining data creatively and um, gain some insight out of it. So we're talking about infrastructure as well. So we talked about the application. Now we are going from top down um, through the infrastructure. Intelligent Insights is based on a container platform. So we definitely need a Kubernetes platform. In this case, it's SUSE Container as a Service Platform. And this is being used to just create a non-monolithic application, a, an agile application that just spawns new containers if uh, there are more resources that are needed. So this is friendly to cloud as well as to scalable architectures um, on premises as well. As a user interface, we see uh, the UI5 interface you might know from uh, any other SAP uh, application, so this is quite straightforward and um, um, the usual design. So it's just different applications between uh, inside this UI5 home view and this is of course the Metadata Explorer. I talked about that implicitly because this Metadata Explorer just lets you to, to um, discover your data and to provide metadata for it. So it makes it accessible actually. Connection management just is, uh, is using all these predefined connections and of course these connections can be uh, enriched by um, uh, custom development to even include more than these default connections and just to create the connection to your different data sources. In the end there's the pipeline modeler and I have a screenshot of that or, uh, as well. And you can just create pipelines with de predefined operators. There are lots of operators and um, it's getting even more. And in the end, if you execute some kind of workflow or pipeline, it will create containers for any of these operations. So this is quite lightweight and containers are created and after the execution has been uh, done, um, they are destroyed again. So this is, of course, um, incorporates the, the philosophy of containers. In the end, together with SUSE and SAP jointly, we define the reference architecture for, for the whole story. It means the application, including um, the middleware and the, and the infrastructure. So our goals were ultimate scalability. You saw it's a container platform. It grows by, uh, by adding new containers. And of course, if we add new pipelines, new workload on it, and so on, um, the platform in the end must be scalable to fulfill these needs. As well as the flexibility, you need to be flexible. It cannot be a high effort to just um, provide new new operation operation uh, possibilities um, in the end it must be resilience because um, it's just an enterprise software and for enterprise software it must be possible that single components of this construct can be uh, can crash and can be uh, took over by, by some kind of cluster solution. So um, as I told you, it's an enterprise solution and therefore we need enterprise ready software and enterprise ready infrastructure. 
so when talking about the components of the solution, we have the Data Hub application and the Data Hub distributed runtime. This, of course, is fixed. This must run on the Kubernetes platform. Having an operating system, of course, this needs to run on a on a corresponding hardware or infrastructure. And network as well as storage network must be present to use some kind of storage. The idea of Data Hub is the data can still reside on their source and don't need to be copied around, um, like for example in a BW system. However, um, we want to save, we want to store data that is maybe intermediate data for cal calculation or result sets or something else we want to just keep in some kind of a cache. So we need storage for that. In the end, we used SUSE Container as a service platform running on a SUSE Linux Enterprise Server for SAP, of course, and uh, this on running on some commodity hardware, smaller systems um, called ThinkSystem SR3630 uh, from Lenovo. It uses some kind of um, 25 gigabit Ethernet switch. There is no fiber channel since we are using SUSE Enterprise Storage as a uh, persistent persistency platform, as well on some kind of commodity servers from Lenovo. Optional, if there is no if there is no um, Hadoop solution yet, we decided to use Hortonworks data platform for that, as well running on SUSE and on some kind of Lenovo Think system. So when talking about um, the container platform, I just don't want to dig into this. Um, there's a um, there's a class from from my colleague from SUSE, Kevin Klinger, who just works on uh, the technical part of running SAP Data Hub on uh, SUSE Casp. So um, I have it on uh, I have a reference on the on my on my question and answer slide. So you can just watch this if you if you're interested in any further. Um, I told you we used SUSE Enterprise Storage because the reason is um, that uh, we have a scalable platform and so we definitely need a scalable storage as well. That's the first point. Um, if our, uh, our solution grows, we also need to be able to grow the storage as well. Next point is um, SUSE Enterprise Storage as well provides some object storage with an S3 API. This is quite important because we need this compatibility with uh, object storage because this is quite important in the big data environment. And so we decided to use the enterprise storage rather than some uh, dedicated um, storage solution. Um, the idea in the end is anything we have and anything we need to increase um, if uh, if we need more power, just scale by adding an additional node. Means if I need more compute power, I add an additional node, uh, add an additional Kubernetes worker, and uh, I can and, and can leverage it. And the same as for the storage. If I need more storage, just add an additional storage node. And of course, the same applies to the network. However, um, I think there are ne there need to be a, some a certain amount of of nodes to um, to have the need for an additional network as well. So, li last point of the technical part: sizing. Sizing is quite, yeah, mm, a little bit like reading in the glass bowl. Means. Uh, we have a development platform. SAP Data Hub is just a development platform. So you might have an idea what to do, but while working with this, working with the application, you might um, get new ideas and want to create new pipelines and new business and so on and so on. And uh, all this, however, influences sizing of the solution. So let's start with memory. So per cluster. For a productive system, 
we need to have at least 256 gigabyte of main memory depending on the sizing guide of our SAP. For non-productive systems, SAP recommends at least 96 gigabyte of main memory. Same as for the CPUs. SAP recommends a minimum of 64 CPUs per cluster. However, 64 CPUs are of course not meant as being a socket. So we're talking about uh, some kind of virtual CPUs or just cores. Same as for the uh, disk space. So for all this stuff, including uh, uh, running as, uh, the SAP software and the OS and so on, SAP recommends uh, roughly about uh, um, two terabyte of, of uh, hard disk. And for external, external storage on the checkpoint store, um, there's a demand of 5.5 .5 terabyte of main memory. Of course, also, and as well, this depends on, on your workload and how you use the application. There are multiple ways to use the application. Um, a minimum of 100 gigabyte for each Kubernetes worker um, in the end for storing the Docker images. And there's a specialty, we need to install some kind of container registry and of course this container registry also needs some, needs some uh, disk space to store um, to store all their all their information, but disk space is quite volatile. So if you need more disk space, you might put in more disk space, of course. So another point is concurrent users. So um, the, again, it depends on how you use the software and. Uh, Maybe there, there are just one or two data scientists working on the platform or just 50 people who are doing, uh, doing stuff, administration, developing, um, or just data governance. And again, then it depends on their activity. So it's quite hard to, to guess how many, uh, how many users we will have finally that work concurrently and uh, um, what what kind of work they do. So again, I'm talking about the glass bowl, just uh, do, a, do a wise sizing and uh, be prepared for for lots of users. As well as the, as the performance the solution needs to provide. Again, this heavily depends on what you finally do with the, with the, with the tool. If you just include streams of uh, video, audio, or or even uh, social media data. Of course, the system needs to be stronger than if you just work on data that you actually have in your on your local hard disk. So, velocity of data that arrives the system is is quite important and crucial um, for the sizing in the end. So, you need to have an idea what you want to do with the with the product, as well as the pipeline models in the end. Um, if you have lots of pipeline models and they are executed parallelly or um, they are just incorporating high amounts of, of uh, machine learning algorithms or something like that, of course this will consume more performance and more um, infrastructure than if you just, um, just do some data governance or, or or something like that. So keep in mind, you need to do. You need to know what you want to do with the solution, and then size the system a little bit like a like a rule of thumb, and um, yeah, make an educated guess. I would say, sizing guide of uh, from SAP might support you, but um, of course, this is um, this is something where you need to need to have some experience and need to guess in the end. I said that there are multiple ways to, to use this, this platform and um, it can be used just as an direct IoT stream ingest and orchestration platform. So you might want to use IoT data in a massive, massive way. 
projects. So um, you might have a, a plant, a production plant, and all these machines in there are, are stuffed with sensors. And the idea is to use the sensors to maybe um, provide data about production or also data about the state of the machines as well. It means you can use it for ensuring uh, predictive maintenance. So you can just see um, whether the, the machines will give up their life or will, uh, will break before they actually break. Then you can do the service and can uh, avoid outage of the machines. So this is a, a huge scenario for, for IoT ingestion. Um, as well as data science. In the end, um, data science is a quite big topic in the, in, the, in the companies. Every company wants to know what data they have and how they can leverage the data. And uh, so there are some things like uh, fraud detection is, is, a, is, a, is an example of what you can do with the platform. So if you want to, want to see if something goes wrong in your company, um, that is might it might be fraudulent you can just monitor it with with SAP data hub and you can detect these kinds of frauds as well as some kind of customer churn analysis means you want to know if your customer is about to leave you as a customer and change to a product of the of the competition and depending on data you have might be uh, um, recordings from uh, from support calls might be uh, uh, data from social media or also what you uh, the number of uh, of uh, items you bought in the past and uh, and uh, bought in the in the recent past um, so you can just detect if your customer might be might be um, um, might be eager to change to change his supplier and uh, in the end, you can make offers that might tend uh, to to save it as your save him as your customer. Uh, next point is uh, a, some kind of replacement of data warehousing. Data warehousing is something that, in my my opinion, is um, started in the 90s and, uh, um, of course, provided some some uh, analytics possibilities. But today. Uh, it's quite unflexible. So you put all your data into your data warehouse, you need to streamline the data, you need to transform the data that it fits into your data warehouse, and um, then you will just have all the data <coughs> in a rather than fashion. And um, yeah, and your possibilities for analytics might be quite limited. So it might be easier to just access the single data sources that, are, that exist in your company means whether they are on-premises or in a cloud or IoT or whatever um, and you can directly work with this data. The, the infrastructure power today um, allows this and so you, you might think about changing your data warehouse approach towards something more agile based on an intelligent insights solution. Next thing is just data cataloging and governance. So for some companies it is, it is crucial to know their data. So lots of companies are collecting data and don't even know about that. I told you about that and uh, the platform itself is able to discover the data, to work with the data and to allow data governance on it. So this is, for some, for some companies, this is enough to think about such a solution. Yeah, um, if you want to know about additional use cases, um, just get back to me, contact me, and um, we can talk about that. And otherwise, I'm open for other questions and uh, will give my answers. I also want to uh, refer to two different lectures at SUSECON Digital 2020 
and this is running SAP Data Hub on Kubernetes with SUSE Containers as a Service Platform by Kevin Klinger, and running machine learning workloads on Kubernetes, SUSE Containers as a Service Platform and SAP Data Intelligence by Andreas Engel. As I told you, SAP Data Intelligence can be taken as a synonym for SAP Data Hub. With the current version um, 3.0, um, the two products have been merged actually. So thank you and I hope for lots of questions.